نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ يعدكم الله إهدى الطائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب زدن علما رب زدن علما رب زدن علما صدق الله العظيم Respected and honorable elders, brothers, mothers, sisters and little ones Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As we approach the last day or two of the blessed month of Ramadan Fortunate are those who performed good deeds in this blessed month And unfortunate are those who wasted this month just like they've wasted 11 months of the year and Mubarak's to all those sisters mashallah and those mothers who have been given the opportunity this year to sit in i'tikaf sadly the men have been deprived of sitting in i'tikaf this year because the men can only perform i'tikaf at, at the masjid besides those few key workers who have been allowed to make and use the masjid and keep the masjid alive uh, they may have performed i'tikaf but on the general masses men have been deprived of this great reward of i'tikaf this year sadly in the month of Ramadan but mashallah those sisters and those mothers who have performed i'tikaf mashallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept just to enlighten you and boost your morale let me just tell you some of the reward that the sisters and mothers have received in performing this i'tikaf and sadly what us men have lost and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those of us who regularly sit for i'tikaf or who are intending to sit for i'tikaf inshallah Allah through his infinite mercy will inshallah grant us this reward inshallah it is mentioned in a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, that while he was once performing i'tikaf in the Masjid Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a certain man came to him, greeted him and sat down. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and said to this individual, I see that you seem sad and troubled. The man replied, Yes, O son of the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am indeed troubled in that I have an obligation to fulfill, i.e. I am in debt. I am in debt to somebody and I have this debt to fulfill. I swear by the holiness of the inmate of this honored residing place, referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I am unable to pay this obligation, i.e. I am unable to pay this debt. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and inquired, Shall I intercede with that person on your behalf? The man replied, by all means if you wish, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, put on his shoes and proceed from the masjid. The man seeing this said, have you forgotten that you are in i'tikaf? With tears falling from his eyes, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, replied, no, the time is still fresh in my mind I heard the esteemed master of this tomb, i.e. referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, whoever sets forth in the way and makes an effort of settling a necessity or a necessary affair on behalf of his brother, that service shall be better for him than to perform i'tikaf for 10 years. 
and whoever performs i'tikaf for a day let me say that once again whoever performs i'tikaf for a day seeking the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will open three trenches between him and the fire of hell the width of each is the distance between the heaven and the earth subhanallah subhanallah so a person performing i'tikaf for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah opens up three trenches three trenches and each trench is the distance between the the width of the each trench is the distance between the heavens and the earth that's how far a person will be moved from the fire of hell subhanallah subhanallah what great reward is for those who have sat i'tikaf this year in another hadith it is mentioned that whoever performs i'tikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan for his for him is the reward of two hajj and two umrahs subhanallah for him is the reward of two hajj and two umrah and a person who sits in i'tikaf from maghrib till isha so a person who sits in i'tikaf from maghrib till isha and does nothing but perform salah or reciting the quran for that person allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a place in jannah allah so that person who is in i'tikaf is he not sitting or is she not sitting from maghrib till isha most definitely they are and for them allah subhanahu and are they not reciting the quran or doing some kind of worship yes they are for them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a place in jannah and then there's two hajj and two umrah reward and then the three ten- trenches the distance between each from hell the distance between each uh, distance between them is the distance between heaven and hell subhanallah the heaven and earth also in this hadith he also mentions that going out in the path to help somebody and ease their burden and difficulty he mentions that this reward is better than sitting for i'tikaf for 10 years subhanallah today we all is have that mentality that is not my problem I don't need to deal with this and we don't go out of our way to help somebody look at the reward look at the reward that ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala and mentioned referring to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying to the effect that a person who goes out to settle an affair or a problem or issue or lighten the burden of another individual allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him is better than reward uh, than sitting for i'tikaf for 10 years subhanallah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq to benefit uh, from these last couple of days of the blessed month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to see many more Ramadans inshallah. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Continuing now with the blessed seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We heard how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set forth to apprehend uh, the caravan of Abu Sufyan uh, that was carrying all the load of the mushrikeen of Mecca all the profit that they had gained which they were going to use against the muslims now news had come to Mecca to al-mukarrama they had prepared their army and set forth to defend their caravan and obviously using this as an excuse and an opportunity to fight against the muslims and na'uzu billah try to eradicate islam now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he meet, uh, when he reached rauha ab rasul sallam jab rauha se chal kar maqam is safra par pahunche now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he reached rauha and after rauha when he sent the young children had back and when then after this he departed and reached the place of safra here he sent basbas radiyallahu ta'ala an adi radiyallahu ta'ala an ahad to spy on and find some information 
about the Quraysh. When they had returned, the news had come that the Mushrikeen of Mecca have prepared a great army with pump and show and a heading towards Badr against the Muslims. Abhi hamne suna ke jab Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne Hazrat Baswas radiyallahu ta'ala an aur Hazrat Adi radiyallahu ta'ala an in dono ko aage karke beja aur jab ye khabar hui aur itila hui ke Mushriki ne Makka ek azim ushan forj le kar musalmano ke khilaf a rahe hain so here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took mashara from the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Why? Because the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een was intention was not to fight. This is why they left with mere 313, 314 or 315 depending on the different riwayats. This is why they set forth. They were ill-equipped. Merely two horses, 70 camels. Some of them barefoot, not much provisions, and they had set forth. And the intention was not for battle. But now the situation has changed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een ke saath jab nikle, to us waq is tijarati kafle ko pakarna tha, larni ki kas se nahi nikle. مگر ابھی حالات بدل چکے تو ابھی صحابہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہم اجمعین سے مشرہ کیا ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ stood up and said a few words to the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم in, the, in, the, in saying that O Rasul اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم whatever the situation whatever you decide we are ready with you whether it means we fight in the state we are in then we are ready to fight regardless how big the army is to console the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and stood up and he said the very same things to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and se mashra kiya jab halat badal chuke to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and uthe and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko yeh tasalli dilai ke jis jaga par ha اور جس مقام پر اور جو حکم آپ ہمیں عطا کریں گے ہم اس حکم کو بجا لائیں گے ہم پیچھے نہیں ہٹیں گے چاہے جتنی بری فوج کیوں نہ آ جائے ہم پیچھے نہیں ہٹیں گے حضرت عمر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بھی اٹھے اس نے بھی یہی کہا اور رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم خوش ہوئے اس کے بعد حضرت مقداد بن اسود رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ اٹھے اور رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے یہ فرمایا حضرت مقداد بن اسود رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ stood and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whatever command O Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah and you give us we are ready whatever the situation it may be we are not like the Bani Israel we are not like the Bani Israel which ne ye farmaya ke joh hukam Allah ne aap ko diya ya aap ame koi hukam de to hum usko baja laenge hum خدا کی قسم بنی اسرائیل کی طرح نہیں ہے کہ جب وہ موسیٰ علیہ السلام کو کہہ رہے تھے کہ جاؤ اور جا کر خود لرو ہم یہاں بیٹھیں گے they said we are not like the people of the بنی اسرائیل who said to موسیٰ علیہ السلام go forth and fight we will stay here we will not go He says we are ready to go and fight and become martyrs in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Mekdad radiallahu ta'ala ne farmaya ke hum bin Israel ki tarah nahi hai magar hum to Allah aur uski Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke liye apne jaan aur maal aur sab kuch kharch karne ke liye tayyar hai. On this the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became very happy. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bari khush huye ke sahabah radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een یہ استقامت دے کر to see their zeal and 
their steadfastness. Again, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the third time, he asked the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een. He asked the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een. Now, from the Ansar, Hazrat Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he stood and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we have bought faith in Allah. To the effect, he said, we have bought faith in Allah and that you are the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the day you came to Medina, we were ready to stand with you. And whatever you say, we are behind you. Whatever you say, we are behind you. If you say to do with such people, we are ready to do with such people. If you say that in fala admi ke saat rishta rakho, to in ke saat rishta rakhenge. If you say that in fala admi ke saat rishta chordo, to in ke saat rishta bhi tohne ke liye tayyar hai. Or he went to the extent that he said, he said, if you tell us to jump in the sea, then we are ready to jump in the sea and the rivers. And if you tell us to jo- uh, to fight against the enemy, then we are ready to fight against the enemy. We will not hold back. He said, if you tell us to go to the sea, then we are ready to go to the sea. And if no one will go back to us, और यहां अगर दुश्मनों के मुकाबले में खड़ा होना है तो हम उनके मुकाबले में भी खड़ा होंगे और हम में से कोई पीछे नहीं हटेगा तो ऑन दिस द प्रोफेसर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम वाज वेरी हैप्पी एंड वेरी प्लीज्ड विद द सहाबा रजियल्लाहु तआला अनहुम अजमाईन इस पर रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम सहाबा रजियल्लाहु तआला अनहुम अजमाईन की ये हिम्मत और जानिसारी को देखकर बड़े खुश हुए और ये फरमाया अली सत्य तब साहब रजी अल्लाह तुम अजमाइन गलत टाइडिंग सू यू बशारत हो तुमको अल्लाह सुबहान प्रोमिस मी विक्ट्री ओवर टू ऑफ द ग्रुप्स अल्लाह सुबहान ने दो जमातों में से एक जमात के ऊपर हमें फतेह और नुसरत अता की है अता करेंगे कौन सी दो जमात विष्ठुत जमात आई द ग्रुप ऑफ अबू जहल or the group of Abu Sufyan. One of those two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us victory over one of them. And Allah mentions this in the verses of Surah Anfal. وَإِذْ يَعِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ إِحْدَ الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ أَنَّهَا لَكُمْ وَتُوَدُّونَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ ذَاتِ الشَّوْكَةِ تَكُونُ لَكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَيَقْتَعَ دَابِرَ الْكَافِرِينَ يُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ وَيُبْتِلَ الْبَغْطِلَ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُجْرِمُونَ Allah mentioned this in Surah Anfal and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given him two vi- a victory over two of the uh, out of two of these jamaats over one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him victory over them. Meanwhile, in Makkatul Mukarrama, meanwhile, the scene in Makkatul Mukarrama before uh, Damdam Ghafali had reached Makkatul Mukarrama. A few things had happened before he reached and before the army set forth against uh, the Muslims. Atika binti Abdul Muttalib, the sister of Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and, and the auntie of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the poopy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she seen a dream. dream. Usne ek khab dekha. Usne khab mein ye dekha ke ek uh, admi gore par sawar hai, uh, ulti par sawar hai, और जब वो अबतह में आकर पहुंचता है तो ऊंटली को बांध कर जोर जोर से आवाज करता है when he is riding his uh, camel he reaches a place called abtah and here he is calling out aloud that all those who are going to be killed and who are going to be toppled come to your places Come to your places now. And it was a very strange dream. And then she says, after this, this very same man, he took his camel once again and came into the Masjid al-Haram. And in Masjid al-Haram, he made the same announcement. Masjid al-Haram mein aya, aur usne yehi awaz lagai. Phir, after this, he went on Jabal Abi Qubais. And here he made the very same announcement. And thereafter threw a stone. 
थ्रू ए बिग स्टोन यहां जबल अबी कुबैश पर यही आवाज दी और उसके ऊपर उसके बाद फिर एक पत्थर फेंका और वेन ई थ्रू दिस स्टोन ए ब्रोक इन टू सो मच फ्रेगमेंट एंड पीसेज एंड एवरी पीस वे इन साइड एवरी हाउस इन मक्कतुल मुकर और उनमें से हर एक टुकड़ा मक्का का कोई घर ऐसा नहीं रहा जिसमें यह एक टुकड़ा ना गया हो आतिका ने फिर यह ख्वाब अपने भाई हजरत अब्बास रजी अल्लाह तन को जिक्र किया आफ्टर दिस आतिका शी मैंशन दिस ड्रीम टू हर ब्रदर हजरत अब्बास रजी अल्लाह तन हजरत अब्बास रजी अल्लाह तन टोल्ड हर टू नॉट मैंशन दिस ड्रीम टू एनी बडी After this, Hazrat Abbas of the Allah Taala an went and mentioned this dream to his friend Walid bin Utba. Iske baad Abbas of the Allah Taala ne ja kar ye khab Walid bin Utba ko bayan kiya. Walid bin Utba dar gaye aur <coughs> Hazrat Abbas ne isse ye kaha bhi ki ye khab kisi ko mat batana. He told him don't tell anybody. But Walid went and told. <coughs> Uh, Walid went and told uh, Abu Jahal, who was in Masjid Al-Haram at the time. When he had told Abu Jahal, Abu Jahal had gathered a few people in uh, Masjid Al-Haram, and when Hazrat Abbas of the Allah Taala was walking past, he said to Hazrat Abbas of the Allah Taala, "The O Abu Fadl, which was the kuniyat of Hazrat Abbas of the Allah Taala, that." Who is now trying to claim prophethood? Who is trying to claim prophethood now? That you had your men try to claim prophethood. Now you get your women to claim prophethood. It was given this tana, a tana dia. Hazrat Abbas said, "Allahu Taala, that you, your men, have done the nabuwat ka dawa kiya, and now your women are also nabuwat ka dawa kar rahe hain." It was trying to give this tana and downgrade. حضرت عباس رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ حضرت عباس رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ اس ابو جہل واز گوئنگ آن حضرت عباس رضی اللہ تعالی نے ابو جہل سے پوچھا کہ کیا بات ہے عاتقہ نے تو ابو جہل نے یہ کہا کہ عاتقہ کے خواب کا ذکر کیا اور جیسے اس نے ذکر کیا اسی دوران دم دم غفائی آیا وین ہی اٹ ہی واز مینشنگ دس ڈریم Abu uh, Damdam Ghafari had come, and what she had seen in her dream that he tied his camel, his horse, and here he started to scream and shout. From there he started to scream and shout and tear his clothes. And in the haram he came, he started to scream and shout and tear his clothes. And then he climbed on Jabal Abi Kubais, and over here he started to scream and shout. And in this pitiful state of his, he started saying to the people that defend and go the uh, 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 and save your caravan. Uh, because the Muslims are going to take it, the Muslims are going to take it. So whatever she had seen in a dream, the very same thing had been seen in reality. The very same thing had been seen in reality. Like this. <coughs> जहीम बिन सल्त जहीम बिन सल्त हैड ऑल्सो नीड सीन अ ड्रीम बिफोर दम दम गफारी हैड अराइव इन मक्कत मुकरमा एंड बिफोर अबू जहल डिस्पैच द आर्मी ही हैड सीन दैट अ पर्सन ऑन अ हॉर्स और ए कमल अ पर्सन ऑन अ हॉर्स एंड ए कमल वो टूगेदर एंड कम एंड दे केम एंड दे सेड दैट Over here, Utba will be killed. Shayba will be killed. Abu Hakam bin Hisham will be killed. Meaning Abu Jahl. Umayya bin Khalf will be killed. Unlike this, he started naming each each one will be killed here, killed here, killed here, killed here. When uh, he related this dream and he mentioned it, and when they had seen them, them Ghafari had come, and this news was said. Okay, still Abu Jahl was that stubborn. He rounded the people and ignored what was being said. And the dreams that was seen. Meanwhile, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had sent Basbas radiallahu taala and Adi radiallahu taala to spy 
on Abu Sufyan and his trade convoy. When uh, they reached Badr, here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was performing namaz and these two individuals they had gone forth and gone ahead and they had heard two women talking and these two women that were talking they were saying that yeah in a day or two uh, our trade convoy will reach Mecca and I will pay your debt and they were arguing about a debt and she said I will pay you in regards to your debt after they heard this conversation they both went back and told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as this is the situation of the convoy of Abu Sufyan. But them two did not notice that Majdi bin Amr Juhni was watching them whilst they were listening to these women speaking. So when Abu Sufyan had arrived, or one of his men had arrived asking to the whereabouts of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had told him that no one has come, but I did see two people that were hiding just next to this hilltop. And they stayed here, they filled their pouches of water and fed their animals and Thereafter they left. Abu Sufyan was a very clever man. He went to the very same spot. Abu Sufyan bara chalak admi tha. Is ne ja kar is makam par. To dekha ke waha oon ki mengya pari hui thi. It was the droplings of the camels. And he had seen inside the. By prodding some of the droplings. He had seen a date. Khajur gutli. The date Gutli, the date stone. And when he had seen this, he had recognized and he said, These date stones are, Wallahi, these date stones are from Medina. So from there, he turned his route. Instead of taking this normal route, he turned this route and went from another route. He went from another route. Usne jab isko khabar hua, to usne se rasta badal kar, dusa rasta ikhtiyar kar liya. Or Makkah Ponchke. And he had reached Makkah. Meanwhile, here he had sent the message to Abu Jahl that there is no need to dispatch the army, return back. Return back, we have reached Makkah safely. There is no need to return uh, to uh, interact or engage with uh, the Muslims. Uh, and lose lives, uh, our convoy has reached uh, Makkah safely. Jab Abu Sufyan Makkah ponche, to dusre raste se, to usne ye pehram beja Abu Jahl ko ke ab log aage jane ki koi zarurat nahi hai, kyunke ab hamara tijarati kafla Makkah salamti ke saath pouch gaya. आप लोगों को आगे जाने की कोई जरूरत नहीं और लड़ने की कोई जरूरत नहीं और वैसे एक दूसरे को कत्ल करने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है अबू जहल सेड दैट नो वी आर गोना गो टू बदर वी आर गोना स्पेंड अ फ्यू डेज देयर वी आर गोना ईट देयर वी आर गोना पार्टी ओवर देयर फॉर अ वाइल एंड देन वी आर गोना रिटर्न अबू जहल ने कहा कि नहीं हम बदर जाएंगे तीन दिन वहां गुजारेंगे खाए पिएंगे मजे करेंगे खूब नाचे गाएंगे मजे उड़ाएंगे और तब वापस लौटेंगे हम हर गिस अभी वापस नहीं जाएंगे अखनस बिन शरीक हु लीडर ऑफ द बनी जोहरा अखनस बिन शरीक जो बनी जोहरा के सरदार थे ही सेट टू द बनी जोहरा द पीपल ऑफ द बनी जोहरा हु ग्रुप that we came here to save our trade caravan and the money that we had put in it. Now, to go ahead and fight with the Muslims for no reason, then there's no need. We are not going to 
kill ourselves and fight for no reason, we're not going to go ahead. So he said to Abu Jahl that we're not going to go ahead and he and his tribe had returned and they did not partake in this battle of Badr. Ahnaz bin Sharik or Bani Zuhra ka jo kabila tha, wo tamam ke tamam uh, Ahnaz bin Sharik ke saath wapas ho gaye aur Badr mein unho ne Sharik, uh, uh, Sharik nahi huye. On this Abu Jahl became angry and when the rest of them started to say to Abu Jahl that we would like to return, he said no, we will stay here at all cost, we are going to stay here. And now Abu Jahl had reached Badr before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they had taken the better strategic spot. They had taken the spot on where the well was, the well of Badr, and they had taken the spot where the land was a lot firm and a lot harder. Abu Jahl aur uska jo lashkar tha, wo Badr pehle ponche aur उन्होंने कुएं के पास जगह ले ली जो चश्मा था जो कुआं था वहां उस जगह को कब्जा किया और जहां जमीन सख्त थी वहां उस जमीन को उन्होंने ले लिया तो इस लिहाज से उन्होंने मुसलमानों से वो जमीन पहले ले ली जो जो लड़ाई और झगड़े में उनके लिए ज्यादा मुनासिब हो एंड द मुस्लिम्स व्हेन दे रीच्ड बदर दे हैड द साइड व्हिच वाज एट अ डिसएडवांटेज on where they had the side of that was full of uh, sand. Retili zameen unko mili ke when you put your foot inside it, your foot would sink inside. Ke agar usme paon daale to paon usme dust jai. Paon usme dust jai. So this was the disadvantage or dusi ye thi ke musulmano ke paas pani ki kami thi. They had no water and animals that were with them themselves for wuzu, for ghusl and drinking purposes, the water was at a shortage. As I already explained, they didn't come with the intention of fighting. I remember in those days, fighting didn't last for a little while, it lasts for days. So, is par Allah ka karna aisa hua ke asman se barish nazil hui. Allah made it such that Allah made it rain and the rain poured down so much ke musalmano ki taraf jo reteli zameen thi on the muslim side the sand uh, the the sand that was all soft had all become hard and joined together and muslims had filled their pots and pans and whatever they had uh, full of water musalmano ne har bartan ko pani se bhar diya taaki ye pani ghusl ke liye wuzu ke liye aur peene ke liye aur janwar ke liye kaam aaye and meanwhile the water on the well on the non-Muslim side, it rained so much that the ground had become so boggy. Zameen aisi patli ho gai ke waha khara hona dushwar tha. Baghair pisalne ke waha khara hona dushwar ho gaya. Aur barish itni hui, it rained so much that all the mud had seeped inside the water. Into the well. A seeped inside the well. Itni barish hui ke parish ka pani kue ka andar bhi chala gaya aur pani ko ganda kar gaya. Allah mentioned this in Surah Anfal inside the Quran. وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَلِّيُ طَهِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبْ عَنْكُمْ رِزَّ الشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَرْبِتْ وَلِيَرْبِتَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتَ بِهِ الْأَقْدَامِ Allah mentioned this inside Surah Anfal on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the rain. Allah ne asman se kaise barisho ko barsaya aur kaise halat ko badal diye. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the odds. And look at the character and the rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar rahmatul lil alameen. Even though these enemies Abu Jahl, Utbah, Shaiba and the rest of them who have come out and to na'uzubillah fight with the Muslims and eradicate Islam by killing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. They are bloodthirsty of the Muslims. But yet when it was need 
for water. Like I said, the Muslims had water and they filled their pots and pans with water. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahmatul lil alameen, still would give the enemy water. Allahu Akbar. Still would give the enemy water. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam par qurban ho jaye. Ki rahmatul lil alameen ka halat, hal, alam aisa tha. Ki apne dushmano aur khun ke piyasho ko bhi is hal mein pani ki bhi peene ki bhi ijazat de di. Ali ho gayo water. Not like warfare today. Not like warfare today, that innocent children, innocent women are killed mercilessly. And there's no regards for the ill, the children or the women. Everyone becomes a target today in today's sad state of affairs of the way warfare happens today. But look at Rasulullah sallallahu that the enemy who is bloodthirsty, but yet he is still Providing them with water. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now, each at their camp. Each at their camp. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Hazrat Zubair bin Awam radiallahu ta'ala an. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala an. And a few other sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an. Hum ajma'een. To go spy on the Quraysh. To see what they are doing. They capture two slaves and they bring them. Prophet ﷺ is performing salah. The Prophet ﷺ has Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu Zubair bin Awam or Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas or Chand Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu Quraysh ki khabar giri ke liye beja aage. Unhoh ne do gulam pakar kar liya hai. They bought these two slaves. The Prophet ﷺ was reading and they started asking information from them. And they wouldn't give any information and they all they said we just come out to get water. We've just come out to get to get water and nothing else. So then they beat them. The Sabrah beat them a bit. And then they said we are for the people of Abu Sufyan. So, this is Sahabar Adilata and Unko Chordia. Sahabar Adilata and let them be. After the Prophet Sallallahu had finished Namaz, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to the Sahabar Adilahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een, that, oh my Sahaba, to the effect that when they were telling the truth, you beat them. And now when they lie, you let them go. Now when they lie, then you let them go. They are the people of the Quraysh. These are the people of Quraysh. And they are not the people of Abu Sufyan. So now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he asked them that how many of the Quraysh are there? Quraysh, Mushikin e Makkah, who came with Abu Jahl, how many of them are there? Asked them how many of them are there? They said, we don't know how many. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned the question around. He said, we don't know how many of them are there. We don't know how many of them so now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them in another way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, How many camels do they slaughter in a day for food? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, How many of them are in a day? They said, Nine to ten uh, camels are slaughtered in a day. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam deducted from here that nine hundred to a thousand are here against us. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam کہ نو یا دس اونٹ کو زبا کیا جاتا ہے دن میں تو رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا تقریباً نو ہزار یا نو سو یا ایک ہزار ہوں گے نو سو یا ایک ہزار ہوں گے ان کی جماعت میں تو دبرو فیصل صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اسٹ ہو اس امونگس دیم فرم دک لیڈرز آف قریش رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ان سے دریافت کیا پوچھا کہ قریش کے سرداروں میں سے کون کون ہیں they said اتبہ شعیبہ ابو البختری بن حشام اور حکیم بن حزام نوفل بن خویلد حارس بن عامر تبیع نظر بن حارس اسود ابو جہل امیہ بن خلف اور اسی سہل بن عمر عمر بن عبود یہ سب ہیں and they said these are all of them 
the leaders of uh, Quraysh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Glad tidings, O Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrown to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrown towards you all the troublemakers today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ni aapki taraf wo tamam jo jagralu aur jagarne aur fasad karne wale tumhare taraf phenk diya aaj. Now they get ready and make preparations for battle. Inshallah, tomorrow in the blessed seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abhi yaha se jang ki tayari hogi jo hum kal inshallah seerat e mubaraka sallallahu alayhi wa sallam me sunenge. As always, before I finish, uh, a few hadith on following the blessed sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I mentioned in the beginning intro introduction uh, about the reward of i'tikaf and then reward of going out and helping an individual and lessening their bird and burden and hardship. In a hadith it is mentioned by Sayyidina Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala and he says that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Divine assistance remains with a person as long as he continues to assist his fellow Muslim brother. Another hadith, it is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created certain people who assist those in need. When people are faced with any need, they hasten to these people seeking aid. These are those people who will be saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So those who set forth in helping and hardships of others, they'll be saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, it is mentioned by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever relieves any Muslim of his grief or hardship will be granted two torches of light when crossing the bridge of Jahannam. Its light will be bright enough to enlighten the entire world, Allahu Akbar. So to go across the bridge, I will give two lights, subhanAllah. Another hadith is mentioned by Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like his family. And thus the most beloved to Allah from his creation would be those who are kind to his family, i.e. those who help and go out to lessen the burden and any uh, and hardships of another individual. Another hadith it is mentioned by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said that whoever sets out in order to fulfill the need of his Muslim brother, Allah shadows him with his 70,000 angels who seek mercy and forgiveness for him and pray for him. If he sets out in the morning, their prayers continue till dusk and if he sets out in the evening, then their prayers continue till the dawn. And similarly, if whatever step he takes, one sin is uh, washed away and one level is raised to paradise. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Such great reward in going out in helping others and lessening their burden. Let's take a step further and let's look at another hadith. Another hadith it is mentioned by Sayyidina Anas. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala and he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person sets out in order to attend the needs of a fellow Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record 70 good deeds for him and forgive 70 sins for each step the person takes. So 70 good deeds will be recorded for each step and 70 sins will be forgiven for each step. And this will continue, continue until he returns to the point where he initially set out from, i.e. his home or wherever else he was. If he managed to fulfill the person's need, he will be purified of all his sins just like the day his mother gave him birth. Subhanallah. And if he passes away during this process, he will gen enter Jannah without reckoning. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Another hadith it is mentioned by A'mash. Rahmatullah alayhi. He says that uh, he says that he said to Hassan al-Basri 
Do you know that setting out to tend the needs of a fellow Muslim is more rewarding than performing uh, one Hajj after another? To performing Hajj every year, it is more rewarding to go out and help another Muslim and uh, lessen their burden and their need. After this, it is stated that Hassan Basri rahmatullah would leave Nafil Aitikaf and he would always go out to help uh, those that were in need and those that were in hardship. So my fellow listeners, we should always adopt this sunnah of the Prophet that anyone we see in need in any way, shape or form where we can help them, whether it's physically going out to help them or whether it's saying a few nice words to them or whether it's just listening to them and lighten, letting them light their, uh, lighten their burden by you listening to them or if it means by financially helping them, then we should do by all means in any way which we can do in any way, shape or form, we should go out to help them in any way. And inshallah, we'll be amongst these individuals uh, that the Prophet ﷺ has described in these numerous hadiths. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the true understanding to what has been said.